Welcome to the online and extended students registration video. I'm Kelsey Nelson and I'm just going to take you through a little video tour of what's involved with registering, how to register, and what you do after registering and things like that. So the first thing you'll want to do is in your browser just type in css.edu and it'll bring you to this St. Scholastica homepage and then you're going to go over here and hover over this logins button and this box will pop up and you'll just want to go to core which is the banner web, google mail, blackboard and a lot of other things as well but just go ahead and click on that and you'll be prompted to enter your username and password so your username should be the first letter of your first name followed by your last name and if you have a common name then it might end with a number as well and then just type in your password and it'll head straight over to core and if you had problems with that another thing you can do is go to the css.edu homepage again if you didn't know your username and password or forgot your username and password or it just didn't work for you, you can go down to the bottom button here, Login Help, and this link right here is for resetting your password if you already know what your password is. But you'll want to look at this one, the username lookup or the account lookup, and you enter in your last name, last four digits of your social security number, and your date of birth, and then of course your little prove that you're not a robot kind of thing and then it'll give you your username if you've forgotten your password then you can call the help desk at either one of these numbers or email and they can reset your password for you let's go ahead and get started here so we're here at the core page and you can see all these tabs up here at the top the one that we're gonna go to is the one stop page here and I want to draw you guys' attention to these little boxes over here, all of these little um, boxes with content in it. These are called portlets, and these things move around a lot, but generally they stay about the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the little portlet that says begin registration here. So we'll just kind of look around, see if we can find it, and here it is down here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up classes. You should have already talked and met with your advisor and gone over what kind of classes you should take, but if you didn't write down those CRN numbers, those identification numbers for each class, then you'll need to look those up again. So you click on the look up classes and choose your semester, and we'll be looking at 2012 fall semester, and we'll look at undergrad and let's just look at the online program and here we are and it pulls up all of the classes that fall in that category so they're all on the online they're all undergrad and they're all in the fall semester so what you want to do is you want to make a search of what you're looking for so generally you'll use these three drop downs but you can also use these three check boxes as well so the first one here, choose a term, lets you choose which term we're talking about, um, which half of the semester, or part of the semester you want. We also have general education type, which are those uh, general education classes that you're required to take before you graduate. Also, we have choose a department, and this is a longer list that has all of the departments that are available here on campus. So you can search for your particular major. We'll look at computer science and refine the search. You see here it refined our search to all of our CIS classes and the day and time arranged usually means online. But you'll have to check down here and make sure it says online as well. What you'll want to do is you'll want to look, say we want to take uh, this one right here. There are 18 seats left open. The bigger the number the more seats are left and you can read the description, you can talk to the professor, whatever you'd like, but what you need is this number right here. This little five digit number is your CRN number and that's the number that identifies the class individually from the rest of them and that's all you'll need to register for that class. So you'll want to write them down on a piece of paper, keep them on maybe a notepad on your computer or a Word document, something like that. So you have them handy because you don't want to be flipping back and forth and back and forth from the registration page just to get those CRN numbers. 
So you'll want to find a couple CRN numbers, then head back over to OneStop. Now that we're back at one stop, we can go ahead and start registering for our classes. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to find that registration tools portlet the little box again and find the one that says add or drop classes. And it'll bring you over to Banner Web to the page where you register for your classes and first you need to select a term so you want to make sure that 2012 fall semester or whichever term you're you're registering for is selected and press submit. Just a reminder for you guys who try to register for two semesters at the same time, if you're registering for classes that are on two different semesters, you have to register for them individually on the, each of those semesters. It has to match up with which semester you chose in that term. So right now I can only register for fall semester and I would have to go back and redo it if I wanted to register for spring classes for instance. So now we're going to go ahead and enter your alt pin and your alternate pin number is six ones so one 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 and just press submit and you come to this page here the add or drop classes page and here you see a ton of boxes here that are little text boxes that you can enter your CRN numbers in all you need to do is copy and paste them over if you wrote them down on a word or notepad if you wrote them down with a piece of paper then just type them in with your fingers that's fine too so and then you can type in as many as you want or only one at a time if you want doesn't matter and submit changes so now we're here and you can see that we've successfully registered for three of the classes um, I got these three classes here. I'm all web registered. Only the ones that you successfully registered for will show up right here. And you can see that I'm in a total of eight credits. For traditional students, full time is at least 12 credits. And for grad students, it's at least six. You want to make sure that you're at the right number of credits for a full time student if you're hoping to get some of those scholarships that full time students get and all that jazz. So now let's take a look at what can happen if you enter a CRN number that a class is full or maybe you entered in a wrong CRN number, something like that. Entering a wrong CRN number is actually really easy to do if you write it down wrong, if maybe you only copied and pasted a little bit of it onto your Word doc or notepad or whatever it is. You'll want to make sure that it's five digits long and if you're registering for the fall semester it starts with a two if you're registering for the spring semester it starts with a six so go ahead and submit changes and you can see here that this class is closed that means that there are no seats left and you can see that you have this little red exclamation point and registration add errors it won't go up with your current schedule with your web registered status or anything it'll stay separate for you so you can see that this class is not one of yours sometimes they have multiple sections for the same course that you can look at but this section section 701 is closed so make sure that when you register that your CRN number is different than the closed one. Next what we're going to do, if you just submit your changes, then it'll reload the page. Uh, next we'll show you how to drop classes. And you can only do this online before the current term has started. For instance, since we're in the 2012 fall semester still, as soon as the fall semester starts, you can no longer drop online. You'll have to talk to your advisor and they'll help you out with the drop process. Let's say I don't really want intro to spreadsheets. You just go to the action drop down and click drop. There's only none or drop. That's the only option you have. And go ahead and submit changes. And you can see that it's not up on your list anymore. It's gone from your schedule, but if you decide that you do want it back, it's just as easy to add it back in again. See? And we have it back. Next we'll kind of look at some of the things that you can do on this page other than registering. We have a class search button here and this is kind of like the course schedule but you can search only by subject. It's not as refined as a search. You can click on advanced search and you can get a really super super advanced search bar but say we're looking for computer science classes again and we don't know any of that and you can see that we came up with all of these computer science classes so you can view the sections that are open for computing concepts here 
and there's only one section, section one. You can look at the time, and it even has your CRN number right there. Just make sure that you're looking at how many seats are open. This page doesn't tell you. You'll have to go back to your course schedule if you want to view it, just in case of those registration errors. We'll go back to here. You can also view holds on your account from this button here. And I have no holds on my record, and holds are outstanding bills on your account or you didn't pass some classes so you can't register something like that and it'll list all of your holds right here and the things that are preventing you from registering the next thing we're going to look at is your schedule after you are all registered obviously you can look at it right here and you can look at the details on the course schedule but there's also a way on banner web that we can collaborate all of the data into either there's two ways there's one there's a detail schedule that lists all of the information about the class and then there's a schedule by day and time which kind of makes a table of your courses so there's a couple different ways to get there the first thing you'll want to do is go to the banner web uh, menu so you can just hit return to menu until you hit back to the main menu you can navigate there through core as well what you want to do is you want to go to student services and financial aid and then go to registration again and then these are the two schedules we have student schedule by day and time and student detail schedule we'll look at the detail first and what it does is it will list your class the official name the course number and the section number and then everything about the class that you need to know how many credits uh, what level is it who's the instructor and this little email icon if you click on it it will open your gmail into emailing that professor so it has that for all of your classes that you're registered for it's pretty basic the other one you can do is the student schedule by day and time so what you'll want to do is you'll want to navigate keep clicking next week until you get to the first week of classes and if you had classes on campus or that met at a specific time it would appear in a little chart here organized by day and time that kind of thing but since we have all online classes um, we have a list here that says courses without meeting times and then our ones right here so uh, you can see these ones and one of the classes that I registered for is during the second part of the semester you see here we're already at November 5th and now we're at a different number than we were previously keep an eye out for that definitely make sure you look at times and dates and everything before you register for them so you don't accidentally overlap so that's about it for the online tutorial if you have any questions you can definitely talk to your advisor again otherwise you can call the help desk if you have technical problems you can stop at one stop to talk to somebody in the offices there really you have a ton of options so feel free to ask questions and I hope you have a good semester